Hello everybody, it's Zach here from realestatelicensewizard.com. Today we're going over another real estate math practice question. If you're new here in this series, we cover real estate math practice questions that are likely to show up on the real estate exam. If you have any math questions you want me to cover, you can drop them down below and they may be featured in a future video. If you want to try real estate math practice questions out yourself, as well as regular real estate exam questions, check out our website, realestatelicensewizard.com. Now this series is amazing for anyone preparing for the real estate exam, so make sure to go to that like button and subscribe that way you're fully prepared come exam day. Anyways, guys, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So today we're doing a price per front foot problem, which is different than the problems we did earlier this week. You guys have been asking about front footage for a while now, um, not just in the comments, but I've gotten some emails about it, and I'm finally going to cover them in these next two videos for this week. Now, here's the deal, guys. These are honestly not that complicated and i know i i feel like i say that a lot they're honestly not that complicated if you just know how to do it so that's what we're going to be doing today and tomorrow we're going to be busting these out we're going to be learning we're going to be teaching all that good stuff all together like usual so without further ado let's jump right into it all right so the problem says what is the price per square foot for a 50 foot wide by 100 foot long lot that sold for $75,000. And it gives us four options, $125, $1,000, and $1,250, and $1,500 per front foot. So they're all per front foot. A little bit of a tongue twister this problem is, so bear with me if I mess up here and there. All right, so anyways, as always, I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity to pause here, go through it, bust it out, find your answer uh, like usual. So go ahead and do that right now and then we'll meet up. So go ahead and start that. All right, so did you guys come up with your answer? Is it the correct one? Well, let's figure that out. So before I give the answer, I'm going to explain this problem in this case, because I do think it's super important for everybody to understand the steps, even if you guys already know what to do here, just as a quick refresher. So what do we do? Well, for all costs slash price per square foot slash acre slash front foot problems, when converting measurements to a cost or value per unit, you have to divide the cost by the unit of measurement. So in our case, or in real estate in general, front foot or the fr front footage, again, excuse me for slipping up there, is a property measurement of the front footage of a parcel of property adjoining the street or water. When a lot is described, the front feet are always given first. That is the case wherever you go. So I'm gonna say that one more time because again, it's so important because it pretty much gives away the entire problem. When a lot is described, the front feet are always given first. So in this case, you have to do the following. You have to take that 50, because again, that is that is the front feet. You have to take that 50 and you have to put that into the problem. So the problem itself is going to look like this. You're gonna be taking the $75,000 and you're going to be dividing by what? 50. So when you do that, it's going to give you $1,500, which is our answer, D. That's right, it's D. All right, so meaning, like what does this all mean? Well, well, okay, let me break this down one more time because you know, even myself, sometimes I get a little confused with these problems, okay? So when doing these price per square foot problems, you have to look at this number or these numbers right here, this 50 wide by 100 long. And why do you have to look there? Because one of those numbers is going to be the front feet, which is in our case, what we need to find. Um, once you get the front feet, you divide what the property sold by, by the front feet. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So in our case, again, when a lot is described, the front feet are always given first. So you're never really gonna have to use this 100 or the second number, and it makes sense. Think about it. When you're looking at a house, uh, imagine you're on the street, 
uh, and and you were like, okay, well, how wide is it? You would you would take your left arm and your right, or <laughs> maybe your left hand and your right arm or right hand or whatever, and you'd you'd measure like from there to there. That would be how wide it is. Now, how long it is would be. Let's just say you have to you know you have to walk on the property and you have to walk 100 um, feet you know long. And again, that's why wide or the first number given is going to be the front feet because that's technically. If you're looking at the house, it's going to be what's at front. Does that make sense? Hopefully. I know this, honest, I swear, I swear, um, I swear to goodness gracious here, guys. This took me forever to understand. If you can understand this yourselves, you guys are going to be like way ahead on this whole, this, these whole problems. So let me just break it down quickly one more time. That first number wide is going to be the front feet. Why? Because when you're on the street and you're looking at the property, that is how wide it is, which means that front footage is going to be that front area right in the front area of the house. Does that make sense? I really, really do hope so. Now, once you do find that front feet to find the front footage price or the price per square front foot. All you have to do is take the total price of the house and divide it by that front feet, which was in our case, 50, because again, that 50 feet, it's 50 feet wide. And if you're looking at the house, it's 50 feet wide. That's the front feet. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, I really hope, I really hope so. And guess what? I'm going to be doing another one of these problems tomorrow. So in case you guys did not get it, stay tuned for that. Or if you want to leave a comment down below, uh, no biggie, because I, I think I'm going to be honest, this is probably the most complicated math problem that we've done yet in this series, just in terms of like using not just what's given in the problem, but what you, you know, you have to actually think about being at that house and, and, you know, looking at things and imagining the front feet to kind of figure out what number that you're going to be uh, using. But yeah, enough of that. I feel like I rambled a lot about that and I apologize. And again, if I slipped up, I am sorry. There was a lot of front feet and front foots in this uh, problem. So it was a little bit of a mouthful. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed any comments, questions, all the good stuff. Leave them down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We do videos all the time about real estate exam related stuff. Uh, it's pretty great. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this is Zach from realestatelicensewizard.com. Make today magical. I'll see you guys next time.